What is going on, investors? Back again, another stock analysis. We actually kind of kick off earnings season again today. So that's super exciting, although most of the major companies are still about a month away. But a big major apparel maker, probably the biggest in the world, Nike, reported earnings today. Take a look. During the regular session, this stock was up about 3% in the after hours. They hit a grand slam, back-to-back -back grand slam when you're up 7% in the after hours. That's 10% on the day. Guys, it's a $182 billion dollar market cap company so uh you know that's a big move for a company of this size really any size but especially one of nike so we're going to jump into the numbers and then we'll jump over to the stock chart as well some interesting stuff happened here on the chart so we'll take a look at that so nike again 182 billion they do pay a dividend they have raised it i think about i think i saw in the press release about 18 consecutive years for me if you can get nike you had a good valuation, you get a good, good price on it, maybe get a little bit better yield than you're getting here, then you do have some dividend growth in there. F full disclosure, I do own Nike shares. I think I'm in for these about $40 a share. So I'm doing really well. And that dividend's a lot juicier, at least from a yield perspective for my shares than you're getting today at under 1%. But there is plenty of room for this dividend to grow. So it's not necessarily something that you're buying in for today. So Nike, let's take a look. Why is the stock up? These are things that you always want to ask yourself. If you can decipher why the stock is up huge in the after hours, then you can maybe make a good judgment if it's a good time to buy this stock right now or not. So let's jump into the statement of income here. So we got uh, revenues here top line and then we'll get down to the bottom line down here we got three months ended in 19 here and then three months ended here in 2020 we see this is actually i think a big surprise their top line was only down about one percent i say only only because we've got a lot of stores still closed especially in big markets here in the united states and certainly around the world as well although nike is driving about a third of their business now from online sales and that has definitely helped uh, keep this revenue up. We saw in the last quarter, it wasn't nearly as nice as this. This is a big surprise for me. Cost of sales came right in line. So everything looks good there. Our gross profit slipped a little bit. We see we went from 45.7 down to 44.8. I think in the environment we're at, I don't think people are really going to, obviously the stock's up, uh, you know, 7% in the after hours. I don't think investors are worried about uh, this to keep the margins where they're at is very nice. Now, where they drew a lot of their profits from in this quarter. Again, we saw that revenues came in line, gross profit came in line. It's basically the exact same spot we're here today as we were last year with Nike in terms of top line. But the bottom line massively got changed because take a look at de demand creation expense. I think this is like sponsorships, athletes, stuff like that. Well, that's down 33%. Operating overhead expense, that's basically flat 1%. That's probably in, in terms of manufacturing and things like that. And then finally, total selling general administrative, that was down 11%. So if you take a look at this percentage of revenues, our costs went from 31.2% down to 28.1%. So our gross margins went down, but our net margins uh, actually went up because Take a look at the net income. Again, we were basically flat on this top line. In fact, we went down just a little bit, but take a look at the bottom line. We went from $1.367 billion in net income up 11% to $1.5 billion. So a lot of profit generated from Nike in the quarter. But again, it's mainly due to cost cutting, but also the fact that revenue stayed uh, relatively strong in a tough environment. Moving down to the balance sheet here, we see that our cash and cash equivalents went up quite a bit. We're going to assume that is because of some kind of debt raise. Even though they had a strong quarter, it wasn't nearly this strong. So we we saw cash go up 136%. Now, that's not necessarily something that you necessarily need to pay attention with Nike. 
I think they have uh, positive cash flows, positive net income. They're going to be able to pay back their debt. What I want to pay attention to is this inventory line. Now, it did tick up about 15%. It'd be interesting on the conference call to see if they talk about this and why this is up a fair amount. Now, we're headed into the fourth quarter, so it could be some of that. They're just building up their inventory for what they're anticipating to be a strong fourth quarter, or in this case, I think this is maybe Nike's second quarter in terms terms of the holiday season. So they might be stacking some inventory in 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 advance of the Christmas season. Let's hope that is likely the case because inventory ticking up not necessarily a bad thing, but not necessarily a good thing as well. Everything looks great from the total asset side. We're up 27% year over year. Most of that is driven by this cash increase here, which we see here down here at long-term debt. That's where it came from. We had 3.4, call it 3.5 billion dollars in long-term debt last year. Now we've got about 9.4 billion. So about, uh, what's that? About a $6 billion increase. And that's about where we're at with this cash. So most of the cash flowing to the top line of the balance sheet really came from this debt raise. But again, they have 8.1. They've got another uh, 1.3 in short term. That's, you know, 9.4 billion right here. Just in cash, you've got some receivables as well at 3.8. And you've got inventory as well. They've They've got plenty of cash. This long-term debt's not something I would really worry about or be concerned about at all. Uh, also, considering the interest rate that they're borrowing this money at, it's basically, uh, I don't want to say it's free money, but it's essentially that. So, divisional revenues. Last thing we'll go over before we jump over to the stock chart. We see here that footwear went up in North America right here, and that offset the declines we saw here in apparel. We were basically flat year over year in North America. So that's really nice. We were up 5% in Europe, in the Middle East. That's pretty nice. We see, again, driven mainly by apparel actually was up really nicely, but also footwear as well. Greater China performed well across the board. That is a very, very good sign because Greater China, the I, it's such a large country. Obviously, I'm not breaking any news there. Uh, this, These are numbers that I'm expecting to continue to grow. This, I wouldn't surprise if one day, maybe maybe even overtapes Europe in terms of the second largest uh, com uh, company division uh, in terms of the countries that they sell into. Now, finally, APAC and Latin America, that went down. That struggled a little bit. Wouldn't really worry about it too much. It's the smallest uh, country that they sell into. My guess is, you know, there's probably a lot of virus related stuff here. There's probably a little bit less, um, you know, internet orders and internet penetration in here. And so they rely more on the wholesale traffic. Finally, moving down to the brands, you've got Converse, you've got corporate, everything looked really strong. Converse was up even a little bit. And you've got the total Nike brand here. You kind of break it out when we say that revenues were flat. Footwear was actually up, and that's kind of the bread and butter for Nike. You kind of get people addicted to the footwear. Maybe they come into the apparel as well. And I think apparel will, will tick up as stores reopen. You tend to want to try those things on, whereas you kind of know the size and things like that with footwear. So let's jump over to the stock chart. Let's take a look at where Nike is right now. So here is Nike's chart and take a look, guys. Here we are. I actually got to remove this trend line. I put it in right in the after hours. We're actually up here. And that, I tried to draw some trend lines in here. I don't want to say that these are the best trend lines, but basically what I wanted to show you was this stock was kind of in a price channel. Now we kind of dip below here. You could probably move this down if you wanted to. You could move it down here. You can move this one up here if you want to, to kind of incorporate all that. But then we're kind of only touching one spot here. But anyways, I wanted to show you we were in a price channel with Nike. We actually didn't see this stock correct. We saw Apple correct, Amazon, Tesla, a lot of stocks ended up correcting. Nike did not. And it is stuck in this price channel. And now take a look at where the shares are. I drew this line up here. I keep having to move it up. We're now way up here over the top of this price channel, way over our 50 day moving average. All these MACDs, all these uh, indicators will just soar up uh, in tomorrow if this price holds in the after hours in into tomorrow. This stock has gapped up to the top of this range. So if you're not fortunate like me to have held this stock, I think I've been holding this stock for six or seven years now. Uh, I'm not looking to 
had at this elevated valuation, what I personally would do is create a chart like this. If you want to get into Nike, create a price channel, you know, that you're comfortable with. I, I kind of liked it somewhere in here where we're kind of touching some key areas of these, like where the chart kind of bottomed out or where it topped out in certain areas. And I personally would wait until this stock came back down to earth a little bit. Whether or not it does that, I don't know. Personally, I don't really want it to because I like seeing my shares go up in value. But if I wanted to add to Nike, I would look closer to the middle. I don't necessarily think we're going to get to the bottom of this channel, but the middle of this channel would be a buy range. Now, obviously, the longer the stock trades up in this range, the, the higher the middle of the channel ends up being. You have to imagine the stock chart keep going up and up and up. And the middle of the channel today is about 118, 119. Well, you know, in a week or two from now, it might be 123, 124. So I think you get what I'm saying. I wouldn't necessarily buy it when we're up here at the top of this price channel because we saw what happened. The stock has been up near a top of a price channel and what happens it overcorrects and comes back down here comes to the top of the price channel comes back down now we're back up here i think this stock will retrace a little bit come back down to earth maybe retest the bottom of the price channel which again at that point might be in that 120 125 range i know we're only a few dollars off of that from from where we're at today but i wouldn't step in at this elevated valuation. Now, it was a great quarter, but you know, there's a lot of stuff still going on in the world and a lot of stuff still needs to go right for Nike to kind of get back on the growth train. They achieved growth mainly by cutting cost. We'd like to see this top line start resuming and resuming upwards. But look, investors don't give a darn right now. The stock is up 9% in the after hours after a strong 3%. And again, really a strong move since the March lows. This stock really has not corrected like we've seen NASDAQ and some of the tech stocks done. So Nike super strong in the after hours. It's a great stock. I totally recommend if you can get in this at a good valuation, you'll get a growing dividend. It's a stock that I would certainly hold for the long term. So that's Nike. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. We'll be back again soon. Good luck with your investments.